throughout my whole life, I would always have people extremely obsessed with me. Whether it was a friend, whether it was a relationship, anyone that came into my life and got to know me, when the friendship ended because of disrespect or betrayal or anything, these people would stalk me till this day and try to become friends again and everything. And everyone, like um, my relationships, the guys would always worship the ground that I walk on, literally make sure that I'm always okay in every aspect of my life. And then I was thinking to myself, why is it that everyone is always obsessed with me? Um, my mom would even say, my sister would say, they would be like, Liz, when people come into your life or get to know you, they are like parasites. They like stick onto you and they, they do not want to leave you at all, you know? And then I really started thinking about, okay, why is this? So I started to analyze my behavior. And I think I understand now the human psychology behind why they become obsessed with me. Um, is this a good thing? Well, I think it's 50-50. I think it's scary because it can become dangerous as well, like stalkers and things like that. But in the same way, you can use this to your advantage. So in this video, I am going to share with you why I think everyone becomes obsessed with me so people can become obsessed with you if that's what you want, of course. Hi guys, my name is Liz and welcome back to my channel. Let's get right into it. Okay, so first thing first, my name, The Wizard Liz, uh, why did I choose The Wizard? Basically, when I was a student, I used to work in this restaurant and I always had like uh, customers coming there. Uh, I worked behind the bar and it was so insane. Like I had women that came up to me and were like, my husband finds you mesmerizing. I just have to tell you. And I would have people constantly come up like, whoa. And people would even ask my boss, like, can she serve me? And then they were like, no, she only works behind the bar. But they were like, whoa, like, she's amazing. Like, she's so mesmerizing. And one day I had like these uh, group of clients, uh, which they all came like from business meeting, women and men. And they were like ordering coffee. And I was like, do you guys want cookies with your coffee? And then they were like, one guy looked at me. He's like, literally, whatever you sell me, or want like me to have, I will take because you, it's almost like you put a spell on us. So that's how mesmerizing you are. So then I was like, well, guess then I'm a wizard, you know? And that's, uh, I never forgot that. So then I was like the wizard Liz, you know? That's how my name is created. And to be honest, I want you guys to be wizards. I want you guys to walk into rooms and people be like in awe of your energy, you know? Like, whoa she or he is amazing that's how i want people to think about you guys so first things first um i think why everyone is obsessed with me is my energy energy is so important it is not about looks most of the time do i look good yes we're not gonna act like that's not true but i'm also not the most beautiful person on earth you know so it is my energy that attracts people See, when I was working that job as a student and uh, all my colleagues would be like, Liz, when you work and when you walk in, it's like a sunshine. Like we are happy to come to work just because you're here, you know? And my energy is always very high. Listen, I was watching this video of um, this movie from Elvis Presley. And everyone that was talking about Elvis and why he's such an icon, they said he has such an energy about him that the other artists did not have. He, you could really feel the authenticity. You could feel the love he had for his music and it was his whole energy, right? So with me, how do I keep my energies high is because first of all, I don't engage in drama or gossip that much. Obviously, like sometimes I talk about things and things like that and that can be considered gossip, but I don't like, I don't spread rumors about people. I don't try to tear people down because that's all low vibrational things. You cannot be in a high vibe if you're um, tearing other people down, you know? Um, also, I am just always like focused on myself and I'm always like, um, yeah, how can I get better? What can I do to get better? Um, obviously I have bad days, you know, I have um, bad days and then, when I used to have bad days, I used to get very depressed, but now I'm always like, okay, what can I learn from this bad day? 
what can I do to, for this bad day to make better? Or what, what is it that my emotion is trying to tell me? Tell myself to feel those emotions. I'm not like, oh, this is a bad emotion or something. Like a couple of days ago, I got very competitive over someone. And then I was like, Liz, why are you feeling this? And then I was like, okay, let's feel the emotion. Let's feel the competitiveness. And then, then I was like, what is it that you're missing in your life that you want from this person? And then I was thinking, maybe their consistency is what I want. I want to be more consistent. Then I was like, okay, Liz, okay, good. Then we have to get consistent, you know? So don't shun away your emotions, really feel the emotions. That's how I, I'm always like vibing high. And as well, I just, I don't watch negative like news, things like that really will bring me down. I don't watch negative videos. Um, I just, uh, I really like, I like laughter. I like, like things that will lift up my vibration always, you know? And, and then I do things like yoga. Yoga is really good to align your chakras as well. Like it makes you so, it's so nice. And I feel so good. Like when I work out, when I go to yoga, it's just an energy that I'm like, I feel so balanced. I feel accomplished when I'm doing things that I love, like making videos like this, that makes me feel accomplished. That's how I always keep my vibe and energy high. And when that's high, then obviously other people can feel that. We can all feel energy. Another thing is I am very detached. Why am I detached? First of all, I, I don't know. I always had this analytical thinking about life. I always saw life as in I can accomplish anything I want, but there's a certain reality aspect to it. So, for example, in my head, I never think that, for example, if I have a relationship or anything, that that person has to stay with me forever. Because I do not, I do not define myself from a relationship or a friendship or a job. No, nothing defines me. I define me. I do not get attached to those things. And, and this is really good because if those things leave, I am not completely shattered. Yes, it hurts sometimes. And yes, I have to get over it. I've been through heartbreak as well, but I get over it fairly quickly because I never in the first place went into something thinking that this will last forever. You know, I think one thing that is promised in our life is that nothing lasts forever. And I think once you develop that mentality of like, hey, listen, this might leave, you know, a relationship, for example, I really dislike it when I see people completely do everything in their relationship and base everything solely on their relationship. And then after years, when it ends, these people don't know who they are anymore. You know, when I go into a relationship, then I'm always like uh, my partner is working on themselves and I'm working on myself, on myself. And we do that separately. We always try to become the best version of ourselves. And then together we can work on the relationship. But it's never like, oh, everything has to be together and this and that. No, we still have our separate lives because we are individuals. We are individuals, you know, even if we leave this earth, we will leave this earth alone. You know, we came here alone, we will leave alone. You have to understand this. It's, it's, um, it's very peaceful to live like that because when there are no expectations, there is no disappointment. I'm the kind of person like uh, if me and my ex broke up uh, or if a friend left my life, I was like, okay, was not meant to be. Our soul contract ended. They were supposed to be in my life for a period of time to teach me something or to give me joy or, or to elevate me in some way. But when their purpose was done, they were meant to leave. And I'm okay with that. So what I do then is I don't stalk them. I don't reach out anymore. I don't do that. I just flow and I go on with my life. And I think they see me then like, damn, like she's just elevating and she doesn't care. It's not that I don't care. I understand the purpose of people in my life. And I understand when it's time for them to leave. Um, so I see that as a beautiful thing, to be honest. I see I serve my purpose in their life. They serve their purpose in my life. And now our contract was supposed to end and that's okay. That's really okay. And because I am so detached, I am also not desperate. I don't chase for things. I let things come to me. Because you know what the thing is? When you're chasing, it means that you're not whole. And what you chase will run from you. This is always the case. But if you're whole and if you're vibrating on a high level, then you can just sit back and relax because those things will automatically be attracted to you, you know? 
I've seen this many times when women, for example, go out or men and desperately are looking for love. They don't get love because you're desperate. But once you make that click in your head, you know what? Let it just come to me. It always shows up. It always, always does. But see, the thing is I create avenues. For example, with my work, right? I made the YouTube channel. I made the videos. I make the content. But now I don't have to be desperate about it because every video that I uploaded is amazing. So I can just sit back and let my manifestations come in because I did the work already. I'm not telling you to just do nothing, you know, create the avenue and then just watch it come into your life. I only make decisions that will benefit me. So whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job opportunity, whether it's someone that I allow into my life, these are always people or things that will benefit me in the long run. So for example, in my relationships, I always, uh, I always date people that show me that they love me. I do not like to hear things. I do not like to hear, oh, I love you. I love you. I don't need that. I need you to show me that you love me because I am a very caring and loving person and I want that from my partner. Once there is something that is not benefiting me in the relationship or I am feeling like I'm being stagnant or I'm not being elevated in any way, I leave the relationship. I'm very easy with this because I have to grow in life. I have this life and I want this life to be my best life. I cannot waste my time. I don't want to be tomorrow like 80 years old and look back and think like, oh, Liz, why did you go into this relationship? You're wasted. it. You didn't learn anything like nothing elevated you. No, you stay too long, even though it was toxic. No, you can never, ever catch me in a toxic relationship. I only date people that are literally obsessed with me. Literally, I uh, all the guys that I have dated, my exes till this day, they would still marry me like this. Because it's just the way that I choose my partner. If they do not show me that they love me, I don't date them. I need to show. You need to physically show me, you know. And yeah, in job opportunities, I don't, I don't, I'm not taking every job opportunity that gets to me. Look, look at me. I never do promotions. Why? I'm waiting for the biggest ones. I'm doing big promotions. I'm, I'm not doing silly little things. I'm not doing it. Why? Because I know I can do big things. I deserve to do big things. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, as in friends, you know what? I make lots, I made lots of uh, mistakes with female friendships. And to be honest, I think I'm going to do a video on that. And I am the kind of person, if you're my friend, if I am good and if I get rich, you will get rich. Literally. Like I am so giving and generous, but I, the same way that I love, I can switch as well. If you betray me, you're out. I don't care. You're out. There's one disrespect. You're out. I do not care how many years I've known you, how close we were, how much you know about me. You're out. Another thing is I do things that I want to do. So for example, say I have a date that I'm going to. If I do not want to go on a date and I just want to spend time with myself, do some self care and things like that, I'll say, Hey, listen, I cannot make it today. And yeah, they get upset and stuff, but then I don't care because I chose myself and I chose what I wanted to do first. When you put yourself first in every aspect of life, people will put you first. When people just see you put yourself first, they think like, oh wow, what does she think she has? Like, what is it about her? Because she thinks that she's so important, you know? Um, and when I say like, put yourself first, it's not like neglect other people because I'm very loving towards everyone. And I give so much, I give so much to everyone. But if Liz wants to do something for herself, Liz will do it. And she knows what's best for her. And I always show up for myself. So I think that just vibrates to other people like, whoa, she thinks she is important, so she must be important. Another thing is my time is precious to me. Um, Listen, I am not going to waste my time, years, everything on a relationship, on a friendship that does not benefit me or in a job. I'm just not going to do it. I think that this thing is not elevating me, not benefiting me. I am out. 
you guys just don't understand how quickly old age comes. I watched this uh, YouTuber, um, I think it's uh, over 60 with Sandra or something. And basically it's an, uh, it's an older woman and she was talking about, yeah, um, you young girls don't understand how fast I went from being in my 20s to being in my 80s now. And she's like, you guys have to enjoy your life. That's what I would really say because time flies, you know? If you're in a toxic relationship, if, if you're in a job that you don't want to do, all these things, um, please, please find something to get out. Find a plan to get out. Because our time flies, our time is precious. We have this life. Let's make the best of it, you know? Let's make the best of this life. I do not want to be old and, and look back and think like, oh, Liz, why? Why did you waste time on this? Why do you do this? No, I want to look back and be like, yeah, I lived my life. I'm a cool grandma. Like I did so many fun stuff and I enjoyed the best that I can enjoy. That's how I want to look back. So yeah, I value my time. So I don't just give everyone my time. No, if, if you're valuable to me, if, if what you're going to give me is valuable, then yes, I'll give you most of my time and I'll give you lots of love as well. But if you're not, then no. It's precious to me. Don't waste my time. Another thing is I am private and exclusive. So I do not share my personal life. Um, I do not. Um, I share the things that I want to share. Other than that, nobody knows anything. The only people that actually know things about my life are my family. I'm telling you, everything else you hear is not true. If it did not come from my mouth or my mom's or my sister's, anyone else doesn't know. Why am I like this? I have made big mistakes of trusting the wrong people. By trusting these people, and I'm telling you, if you think that your friends that you've been years and years friends with will just take it to the grave and everything, I'm here to disappoint you because I've seen friendships of more than 10 years, people betray each other. Be careful, be careful what you share. Be careful. What happens when you are like this is you create a whole mystery around yourself. I don't do this on purpose. This is just genuinely how I am. I'm a very like, I like to be on my own. One day I'm just hoping to go live in a, like a country that's just filled with nature and just have a house there and just be on my own, literally, or be with my mom or my family, you know, but I don't, I, I like to be on my own. So then it creates a mystery. What, the human brain loves fantasies. I uh, read this in book from uh, Robert Greene. They love fantasies. So um, even my mom, I was talking to her. I was like, mom, uh, why is it that people create these rumors about me? Like, because I heard a rumor was so stupid. And I was like, why did they say that? That's so stupid. And then she was like, but Liz, it's because the human brain loves fantasies and their life is kind of boring. You know, they're boring. So you are interesting to them. They rather fantasize about you and make you something that you're not than, than come to terms with their own pathetic life. Yeah, the less people know about you and just, you know, they, they like to then create stories about you. So you're on their mind. People will become obsessed like that. Hunting as well about oversharing. If you used to do this, I'm gonna tell you something. Now you have to think about are these people worthy of knowing this about me? Because once you share something, you can never take it back. So you have to really think about, are they worthy of knowing this about me? You know, some things, you know what? You have to keep to yourself, not even tell your family. If you really need to tell someone, talk to a tree. Another thing is I'm not always available. Like you can't call me up and Liz, come here and this and that. No. Uh, respect my time. It's literally like you have to tell me, hey Liz, are you okay? Uh, okay, like if can I come over? Do you want to come over? And if I feel like it, yes, I will come. But it's not like oh, last minute you have to come here, you have to do this, do this, blah blah blah. No, I will not do it. Simply, I will not do it because I don't have to be available for you. That's not my responsibility. I take calculated risks. So. Um, when I started my brand, when I started my business, when everybody was like, hey Liz, um, 
you're about to lose us. You're about to lose your whole family if you continue this. Okay, so then I was like, okay, uh, guys, listen, I'm going to do this anyways. And you guys will turn around when I am successful. I know you guys will turn around. So I took the risk of losing my whole family and doing this. And now I have everyone and I can help everyone. I can, you know, I can do things for them now, which is such a blessing. And now everyone is so proud of me. But see, I took cal calculated risk. So what even happens is my family, um, everyone in my family now looks up to me and is like, whoa, we can also do things. Like, I'm kind of like the cycle breaker. I started to heal myself. I created my own brand. I'm really healing all my family members. I'm doing everything. And then they're like looking at me and being like, whoa, she really did what she said, what she, what she was going to do. And now they cannot do anything but respect me for it. So they look at me as in like, whoa, when you take calculated risks, when you're not afraid to do certain things, I'm not saying uh, put your life in danger, you know, when you're not afraid to do certain things and you don't quit and you go for it, then other people start to admire you. They come to you for advice. The conversation is different now. They talk to you with respect because they can see that you can do it. So they want that in themselves. So you are even more mesmerizing for them. I've always been like that. I've always been the kind of person, if I want something, I do not care how, but I was going to get it, always. And I think other people find that so interesting. And it's just the fact that oh, she doesn't quit, like nothing can stop her and she still goes for it. I think other people just admire that in me and they're like, whoa, I want that as well. I am very authentic like extremely extremely authentic i genuinely just want the best for others and if somebody gets like successful or anything i don't get envious i get motivation like i look at them like whoa if they could do it i can do it as well you know that's how i look at others and i think that energy of truly because every friend every relationship everything every person has ever met me said whoa you are truly who you are like i do not have a whole fake thing and i create like who i am and then i'm nice online and then i'm really mean in real life no i'm just really not and why is this i think this stems from my mom my mom's also very authentic very giving um even at her job um one of her colleagues came up to uh, my mom and she said, when I first saw your daughter online on YouTube and stuff, I thought like she was fake. She was faking it, like being this whole trying to help people and whatever. But then she said, like, knowing you, that you're her mom, I absolutely love her. And I just know that she's very authentic because my mom is literally like the best woman I can ever like there is not a bad thing in this woman's bone my mom is literally like me she's always helping people at work she's always like healing others she's very spiritual as well like i can see even when i'm becoming older that i'm becoming so much like her and i just think that's such a privilege because if i can be anything like that woman i'm just ah, oh, i'm so proud of myself literally i want the best for others when i had friendships when i had everything i'm like I'll come down here, I'll pay for your ticket, like, I will pay for everything, um, like, let's do this to make you better, let's do this to make you better, like, uh, when they have a problem, okay, we can fix it, see, the thing with me is, I do not see problems, I've never seen problems in my life, never, the thing is, like, I only saw solutions, always, see, I come from a very, very abusive, uh, childhood, right, so I was mentally and physically extremely abused, but the thing was always like in my head i was like oh i'm gonna get out of this i'm gonna get out of this and when i get out of this i'm gonna create a good life for myself i always knew that that was gonna happen and i always knew that uh that i would be in this like uh in the media world i always knew i always knew that i was meant for something really big i had that feeling ever since i was young so i just have this thing of like when somebody comes to me with a problem, I'm like, okay, let's fix it. It's easy. Let's fix it. Let's do this, you know, and I, and I do fix it. So that's why people, they, they, they gravitate towards me. They're like, you make my life better. Every single person that have, has ever been in my life, I have genuinely made their life better. They have left my life a better person. Always, always, without a doubt. 
and even like my exes used to tell me like i literally became so much better because of you and just you leaving my life is a loss it's a big loss when you have this energy of everything will be good and you have that strong faith and you just want the best life and you want the best for others you want the best for yourself you take care of yourself you love yourself to such an extent that to be honest if i was a man i would 100% date myself 100% because there is no person that is ever ever come out of my life more depressed they always left better always be left a better human so it just it just i think people think it's just fun to be around me i am just very detached as well you know I'm, i like don't chase them i'm not desperate um and yeah it's just like i'm just like this ball of energy and they want to be around me thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys learned something um and yeah i love you guys so much and i see you in the next video